Well, welcome everyone, uh, and uh, uh, an especially warm welcome to Justice Singh and to all of the members of the family. It's really uh, terrific uh, that we're holding this event for the first time in Cambridge. And we're delighted to welcome the newest recipients of the Pratava M. Singh Cambridge Scholarship. And I want to take a moment to say a very uh, sincere word of thanks to you and to your families for uh, the wonderful benefaction which supports uh, really outstanding Indian students to study here at the Law Faculty at Cambridge. As you well know, for over 700 years, the Law Faculty here has been creating exemplary legal scholars and practitioners of outstanding caliber, and we're really thrilled that uh, Indian students supported by you are part of that grand tradition. As of course are you, having graduated in uh, 1992 with an LLM and then really blazing a trail as one of uh, India's leading intellectual property litigators, uh, designated a senior advocate by the Delhi High Court in 2013. And I gather that was the first time that an intellectual property lawyer had been so designated. So that's a great achievement. Of course, then elevated to the post of permanent judge of the High Court of Delhi in 2017. The great students that are attracted here, having an opportunity to follow in your footsteps, I think really uh, enrich the intellectual life of the wider Cambridge Law community. And that is extremely important to us. And I will say particularly at this time of some uncertainty in uh, the understanding of Cambridge and the United Kingdom's uh, evolution in the wider world. Uh, I do want to be really clear that we at the university see India as a preeminent partner for us going forward, absolutely crucial uh, to the future of the university. And we take great pride in the accomplishments of Indian students who come and study here and then go back to India and make extraordinary contributions at home. And I have no doubt that the current uh, new students coming here will continue in that grand tradition and we'll have a moment uh, to say more about that soon. But first I would like to ask my colleague uh, Eilish Farron, uh, also uh, a faculty member here in uh, the Faculty of Law and Pro Vice Chancellor for International and uh, Institutional Affairs, uh, to give a little bit of a history of uh, women. Uh, and the importance of women studying <laughs> at uh, the faculty and indeed women in law. Thanks, Alish. Thank you, Stephen. Um, well, I'm delighted to be uh, again attending an event to celebrate the Pratima Singh Scholars. Um, I've had the great privilege of participating <coughs> in the event in New Delhi on a number of occasions. Um, and so it's a very special pleasure for me that we're able on this occasion to hold the event in Cambridge. And it's very timely that we do so. Just at the end of last month, on the 27th of September, the faculty officially launched a new initiative, Cambridge Women in Law, which is to mark the contribution of women in law, and in particular, to celebrate the contribution of Cambridge alumni, both to legal practice and the wider world. The launch event marked the centenary of the passing of the Sex Disqualification brackets, removal brackets, Act 2019, when women were finally allowed to practice law in this country. Over 200 guests attended the day and it was hugely inspiring for everyone there. We had three parts to the afternoon. The first was a panel focusing on issues facing women in practice. Then panel oriented around women who've studied law, but then gone on to have an impact in the world outside legal practice, such as in the field of public policy. Finally, there was a discussion which I was delighted to facilitate between UK Supreme Court Justices Baroness Hale and Lady Arden, and that was in the week when the Supreme Court delivered its judgment on the prorogation of Parliament. So it was in a, a very timely event and very uh, appropriate at that time to celebrate the contribution of Cambridge trained minds to the development of uh, uh, sort of key issues in this country. 
Throughout that afternoon at our Cambridge Women in Law launch, we had key themes of equality and diversity. And we particularly focused on the need for greater equality and diversity within the judiciary, particularly at its more senior level. So it's appropriate we remember that event and link it to this other great event here today. And we do so with Justice Singh here as a very fine example of our alumni who built a hugely successful practice in intellectual property law, becoming managing partner of Singh and Singh in New Delhi, and now appointed as a judge of the Delhi High Court. I think we can safely say that our uh, lead guest today, sitting appropriately in the <laughs> justice seat, embodies all the qualities that we seek to champion through the Cambridge Women in Law Initiative. So thank you, Fatima, for me personally, but from the law faculty and from the university as well, for your contribution and for yours and your family's leadership and support. I'm delighted that you're with us today. Thank you so much. Uh, props to um, my wish guests from Cambridge, my family who's here, and the two brilliant scholars who are going to get the scholarship, or who are already here with the scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a very, um, if I must say, a very emotional moment, because uh, today, when I sat in the LLM class, I was wondering how life comes a full circle, mm -hmm. isn't it? So it's really nice to be here in Cambridge and to um, meet everyone here and to have such beautiful memories, again, etched over the old ones which exist. And um, I must say, the scholarship event always takes place in September. And uh, since we were coming for our son's graduation tomorrow, and we were very happy to be here in Cambridge with Claire and the whole team and Eilish and Vice Chancellor, taking so much interest in the scholarship ceremony and the um, kindness that they've shown us today. We are, I'm very, very happy to be here. And I must give a, say just a few sentences about the scholarship. I'm sure you all know about how it all started. Um, it started when um, my husband, Mr. Maninder Singh, who's not here, his 50th birthday was to be celebrated. And he said, no, we need to do something different. And that's how the whole uh, concept of giving out a scholarship and setting up a charitable trust happened. And we're today on the sixth year of our scholarship. And a total of 11 students, including the ones who have come here today. The extremely good thing about the scholarship in the last six years of that years is the purpose of the scholarship was to give it to people who are meritorious and who need it. So it was a merit come need <coughs> scholarship with some focus on intellectual property, but I think I'll have to give up that focus now because now I'm a judge and I cannot show a bias in <laughs> intellectual property. <laughs> so uh, every year we, we've chosen students who've at least taken one course. And the nice thing is whenever we've had uh, students who've been interviewed for the scholarship, I like the way the students have made it clear in their SOP that they want to do one subject in IPR. Whether they do it or not, I don't know really. <laughs> Okay, so the, um, the procedure with, with the scholarship is uh, selected is also very, um, very nice and very streamlined. Only those students who get admission into Cambridge and then are shortlisted by the Faculty of Law and a panel is sent to us. And I would like to remember Dr. Nikhil Tandit, who is not here with us today. He and me hold interviews and then we decide on either two or three scholarships. And the students who've got the scholarship in the last five years, have lived up to their promises and they're all in touch with me and I can say that they've all returned back to India mm -hmm. except one I'm not sure <laughs> but otherwise everyone else has come back to India. They're all practicing in India, they're contributing to the Indian legal system which is what the scholarship is meant for. You need to learn at the best institution in the world and bring back your experiences back to the country. That's the purpose. And every year the scholars who've been chosen have been really like the top, the best students from their colleges, etc., etc. But, you know, to live up to that 
thing about contributing back to the country is what the scholarship is meant for. Because when I came here with a Cambridge Trust scholarship, which they give out so many of them every year, I would have never been able to do an LLM without the scholarship. So the motivation for the scholarship is the young deserving students and our family's intention to give back what we've, we've earned. And to that extent, this scholarship has really um, made us satisfy our goal of giving it back. And I'm very happy about that. And I would like to mention uh, my experiences in Hughes Hall. Dr. Mm -hmm. Fielding is here. It was a brilliant college. Maybe one or two of the only graduate colleges in Cambridge. But what I miss is in Cambridge is the beautiful view I used to have of the cricket club. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for hosting this event today. And on behalf of my family, my husband, my entire family who's here, um, we just hope to strengthen this relationship with Cambridge always. And of course, it's it's a pleasure to meet Professor Bentley, yeah. whose textbooks we always read. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Joanna Miles and I'm the current director of the LLM programme. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome you all here today and to meet properly for the first time uh, this year's two scholars. So congratulations to you two and thank you. Uh, for your philanthropy, which has made this possible. Um, so I was invited just to say a few words about the uh, master's programme here in the faculty today. We have an outstanding international cohort of about 170 students who come to us each year, and that's from 1,200 students who apply to us each year. So it's uh, an internationally well-renowned course that attracts a huge number of very well-qualified students and picking the ones to whom we make offers is an incredibly difficult job, um, but it's always a great pleasure to welcome a new cohort um, as we've been doing for the last week or so. Uh, the students, of course, come and see a very wide range of legal interests, of which IP is just one, um, but the IP team on the LLM uh, are outstanding, so thank you to Lionel and his team of uh, uh, course teachers who, who really do put together a fantastic intellectual property law programme. Um, but as you've acknowledged, perhaps you might look beyond IP for the future, so that will be interesting. I'm sure Indian students with other uh, legal interests will be, will be pleased to hear that. Um, it's been a particular pleasure to welcome so many Indian students to the programme um, in recent years, um, but particularly uh, I've noticed as director, seeing the whole cohort, uh, what a significant body of Indian students we are admitting uh, each year. Uh, and that's fantastic. It's a very international programme. We make offers from about 60 jurisdictions in total, and we have 42 jurisdictions represented on the course this year. Uh, and as director with overall responsibility for admissions, I do seek to ensure that we maintain a good diversity internationally. Uh, it brings, of course, people with different juristic traditions and backgrounds, um, and it's that intellectual uh, richness that we get from that international cohort that's that's so important um, and the, the contribution that the Indian students makes to that is particularly valuable. I teach comparative family law and policy okay. and in that field <laughs> there are some very different uh, tales to be told uh, from, from the Indian perspective. But of course the scholarships are absolutely essential. You've, you've mentioned the trusts who do absolutely fantastic work for us here in the faculty so thank you to the representatives of the trusts who are here. Uh, for all that you and your team do. Um, it's so often essential for some of our very best applicants that they have funding. That's the one thing that stands between them uh, and coming to Cambridge to study. So uh, without generous family such as yours, um, sadly some of our students who are here today would not have been here. So thank you for, for enabling that to happen and I'm sure this year's uh, scholarship recipients uh, share with me in thanking you for that. Thank you very much. I think it's time to present the scholarships. I think uh, we'll have some words, right? First from from our two students, and then we will uh, and then we will continue. Thank you. Okay. Uh, respected Pratibha Ma'am, respected Vice Chancellor Sir, all the professors here, all the family members, and the Cambridge Trust people, 
a very good afternoon. So I'm Surabhi Lal, a recipient of this prestigious scholarship this year. I must begin with uh, what I feel at this moment, which is an uh, extreme difficulty to come to terms with the fact that I am presenting the scholarship address at the Faculty of Law in Cambridge. So, so many unimaginable things in one single sentence. <laughs> and I, it's, it's amazing. So, uh, okay, so I will, uh, I, definitely there are no words which can truly express what I feel, but I'll nevertheless give it a try. It was 21st July 2019, I was returning home from work in Delhi, and I was just thinking about all my cases and upcoming complex matter in Bangalore, and I made my peace with the fact that I was not going for an LLM. So then I received an email from Cambridge Trust and I was driving and uh, I just opened it quickly and I was like, okay, I've got it, I've got it. And I just, I mean, to my utter surprise, I thought that when I would receive a scholarship, I would do this, I would do that, I would call this person, but I think I was just, I just froze. And so did the traffic behind me. <laughs> I, I was like, there was an annexure, an attachment to the email. I just quickly opened it without caring about the home team. And I reread it and reread it. And I was like, oh my god, I've got it. I've actually made it. I'm going to be in Cambridge. But by that time, the honking had increased. But it was helpful because it helped me come to terms with reality that, okay, now I have it and I am going to be in Cambridge on this very prestigious scholarship. So that was the moment. And I think I distinctly remember that day when I went to my home, the look on my mother's face, the feeling on my grandfather's face and definitely I can't forget the feeling my father had on his face over FaceTime. They were so deeply satisfying and encouraging that my belief was reaffirmed that hard work can get you there. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you to the trust for making this unbelievable opportunity like achievable for me. Other than this, I think uh, there are a few important people I should definitely mention here. One would be Dr. Tandon. The interview with Dr. Tandon was full of grilling questions. And by grilling, I mean, I mean better than what I had faced in Jessup or Biz, much more grilling than that. Because it actually made me realize what I was looking for in this LLM program. My mind was completely clear that I am going for this LLM to do this, this and this. So that was what I went out of the interview with and it, it made my belief more, more and more strong that it was a good decision to go for the LLM. I cannot forget Maninda Sarya, who I had the opportunity to meet regarding a matter after I got the scholarship. And his wise words and his, like he appreciated me so much that it has only given me this entire encouragement to do better and better. And uh, since now I'm here at Cambridge and this entire week I've spent here, I can say this with complete authority that this scholarship is not just about financial support. It is huge. It is larger than that. It is about an amazing experience. It is about growth. It is about a commitment towards oneself. And above all, it's about being associated with a mentor like you, ma'am. So thank you. Thank you for granting me this opportunity. And I reassure you that I'm going to leave no stone unturned to get the best out of these nine months. Thank you. The last thing is, and what I've really learned from this is the act of giving back to the community. I will make sure that one day I am in a position to be able to change someone's life the way you, the trust has changed mine. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. standing here in front of leaping crates or the fraternity, but going after Surabhi makes it all the more scary. <laughs> <laughs> See, the nervousness is all the more aggravated considering I have what they call stage fright, this intrinsic fear of public speaking. But it's a little ironical because my bread and butter depends on it. I am a law lawyer after all. I have to be as outspoken as my faculties would permit. But I guess that is what life is. It is to question your infirmities to constantly challenge your inhibitions 
and make way for a better version of yourself. A servant was perfected the same and made and manifested internal battles within the resounding success of a career trajectory. Justice Singh is probably the best person to speak on how tough the battle usually is. She would, however, choose to not give it much importance as we would like her to give. Humility is her middle name. She knows it has been tough, but she also knows it was all worth the toil. It is not entirely impossible to imagine her struggle as a woman to be taken seriously in a, in a profession historically dominated by men. To have the same people who had once questioned her abilities to now address her as lordship in an open court is nothing short of a courtroom drama. Her success is a note to hard work, determination, and above all, persistence. The realization that I am to carry her name as part of my identity now is supremely exciting and also a little scary. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> when I applied to the University of Cambridge, I doubted my prospects. I was confident of being accepted, but I was a little shaky about crossing the huge monetary barriers in the term of costs. But math made that possible. None in my family has ever studied abroad. My father, an engineer from the Indian Institute of Technology, he had been accepted for a master's program in the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. But sadly, he did not have a justice in his life. Not all are privileged, not all are lucky. As much as I would like to believe that I got lucky in this one instance, the synchronized chain of events which has led up to this particular moment makes me believe otherwise. I sense it as a responsibility upon my shoulders, a duty to imbibe the virtue of generosity and also learn to give back to people in whatever little way I can, of the knowledge gained and of the skills learned. In that regard, I'm fortunate to be here, an abode of excellence, a temple of liberal thinking, the University of Cambridge is all that I had imagined and much more. I remember my mother telling me the story when she received knowledge of my acceptance. A professor in Cambridge had come up to, his cl come up to her class with an archaic model of a 3D bone. It had 28 carvings. She presented to the class. This is what historians would argue man's first attempt at making a calendar. She stopped for a moment. She then asked, tell me which man would need a calendar for 28 years. This is probably a woman. Little things like this, which we often overlook, <laughs> that's what sets this institution apart. No contribution is big or small. And as the proverbial saying goes, without the discovery of the wheel, we would never have dreamed of developing wings to fly. It still seems a dream that I have made my way to Cambridge, but seeing Justice Singh, the woman who made it all possible, sit right across me, comes as a huge relief. Her smile reassures me that I am no Sindhu Ferry. I am, after all, a Pratapa Singh scholar. <laughs> well, I must say, as someone who also came here only because of the generosity of others in granting me a scholarship, I found that very moving. So thank you both. And I also have to say that uh, you have reaffirmed the universal view around the world that Indians are among the best advocates in existence. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. There is something about the traditions and the skills that are developed in the education system in India that provides extraordinary abilities uh, for uh, lawyers. And uh, we're very lucky to have both of you. So thank you very much. And now it is genuinely time to present the certificates. And I think we should go down, probably. That would make it easier. And if I may, uh, before we conclude, I would like to present a small token of thanks on behalf of the university uh, to you. This is actually a photograph of the uh, second floor of the library where you will have done most of your work while you were here as a student, as did I. So I looked at it and I thought, oh, I'd like one of those too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.